it's gonna work. Okay, that should be everyone. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Roger Paul, and tonight we are going to continue our study uh, on paper 49, uh, and that is The Inhabited Worlds. And we're on page 560 on the original book, and or that's, in the other books, it's 49, section two, paragraph one. Um, in all other books, you can find it that way. And tonight we're going to continue on where we left off last time uh, on the planetary types. So this is, uh, let's have, say a little prayer and I'll get started. Father, thank you for bringing us together tonight. Thank you for this wonderful revelation. Pray that you open our hearts and minds that we might remember a little bit of it and share it with others. Uh, help us stay strong, safe, healthy, and we will appreciate all your many blessings you give us. We say this in the name of your son, Michael Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. And since Diane's not here, I think I'll start out reading myself today. Let me arrange this a little bit so I can see it. Two planetary physical types. There's a standard and basic pattern of vegetable and animal life in each system. But the life carriers are oftentimes confronted with the necessity of modifying these basic life patterns to conform to the varying physical conditions which confront them on numerous worlds of space. They foster a generalized system of type of mortal creature, but there are seven distinct physical types as well of, as thousands upon thousands of minor variants of the seven outstanding differentiations. No, and they are, number one, atmospheric types, number two, elemental types, number three, gravity types, number four, temperature types, number five, electrical types, number six, energizing types, and seven, unnamed types. Now, let me explain who the life carriers are first, because we get into this paragraph, we don't know what the life carriers are, but we're going to be confused to start out with. The life carriers are a degree of local sunship. They're the very last uh, on bottom of the totem pole, as you say, right next to mortals. And the life carriers are the physical or spiritual marancha beings, if you, if you will, that carry the life chemicals to a planet and implant them in the oceans, usually. That's where they do it, usually about three different places. But the life carriers themselves don't have to do it and carry it to a planet. They can come to a planet and basically take the stuff that's already on the planet through evolution growing, and they can manipulate the DNA of this material on the planet, and they make a primordial soup, if you will. I don't know what else to call it. They put all everything they need together in order to create all animal life and all plant life, and everything that ever is going to be projected in the evolution of this universe, they do this. And the interesting part of this is you're going to find out later in this paper that we are a life experimental planet. Every decibel planets or every 10 planets that these life carriers come to the planet and in plant life are able to make modifications to this life implant stuff or this suit to try to improve the type of mortals that they're going to create. So that's why we're called the decimal planet. Every 10th planet that becomes a decimal planet. And what they can do on the other planets is very, very limited. They can only put a certain uh, stuff together to make the different kinds of mortals. And we're going to find out tonight there's, there's all types of different types of mortals and variations of each and every type. Another interesting thing is this. These seven types they're talking about here, the atmospheric type, the uh, elemental type, the gravity type, the temperature type, the electric type, the energized type, and the unnamed types, most planets are a combination of these different numbers. So, so when you see a 
atmospheric type, that would be a type of being that flies, okay? And we're not in that category, even though we lived in the trees when we were, were first evolving. The elemental types, we definitely have the elements because we're part of land, ocean, or air. The temperature type, we're right in the middle of the temperature type and the same thing with the gravity type. And we're electric. Our chemical makeup is electronic or uh, uh, it's not on the only magnetic, but it's electronic. So we are included in many of these types, okay? So you can't think that just because it says one type, that's the type of being they're created. It's a combination of these and many other things that we're going to see in this paper tonight. Okay, so I want to get everybody's brain straight on that because when I first started reading this book, when I read this and I thought, well, atmospheric types must be only the ones that fly, but that's not necessarily the case. They might starting out, they might start out as flying and they might evolve to land-based animals. Okay, so it depends on what type of soup the, these life carriers put together. But on ours, like I said, we're experimental. So we're a little bit different than every other planet, all 619 of them in Satania. So we're a little different. So what's that mean? That means we're gonna live, breathe, do things a little bit different. For instance, the energizing types, the energizing types talks about how we get in nutrition and we get on our nutrition, believe it or not, from the sun. You go, what? The sun creates plants and animals. We take those plants and animals and we consume them. We eat them, both the plants and animals. So these plants and animals are growing due to the what's going on with the sun. They eat the vegetables and that sort of thing. So they get the energy from the vegetables. We eat the vegetables and ergo, we have energy. We can't get direct energy from the sun, but believe it or not, there are some types of beings that can get direct energy from the sun itself. And we're going to find this out tonight. The midwares fall in this category. Okay, so they don't have to eat and drink like we do, which is kind of interesting. Even the Maracha creatures eat and drink, right? When you get to the mansion worlds. Okay, yeah, Rodney. Curious, so I can't remember the life carriers. Are they Marantia or Midway? No, they're sons. They're actually the very bottom rung of the sons of God. So they must have some kind of physical bodies. I'm not sure if that would be a spiritual body or a Marantia body, Rodney. But they would, have to. I I would. They have to go to a planet that has no resource. That you know, it's an evolving planet, so they can't go to a planet and expect to eat food, could they? Because the food's not there yet, right? So the so the the life carriers would have to have some kind of nutrition where they could absorb energy from the current sunlight or something like that to get their energy. I suspect that probably most of the angels do the same thing. Or bring uh, food with them. That's what I mean. Um, yeah. They transport life. They can transport yes. life. Yeah. But, but we don't know, Rodney, if they are required to have a transport seraphim with them to do that. You see what I'm saying? There may be other things that they use to bring this life to the planet, including vehicles, right? could be some kind of celestial vehicle or a marancha vehicle that they fly to this planet. You know, they had to bring the tree of life here for, <laughs> for the Caligasta 100, right? And they, brought, they said that they transported it as a bush. It, it wasn't a tree when they brought it. They had to transport it as a bush and let it grow into a tree. Now, how did that bush get here? Because they say in the transport seraphim, the reason they they don't transport human beings in their physical bodies because they burn up in the atmosphere, right? Correct. So it makes me wonder if they don't transport this stuff through some kind of celestial spaceship or a Marancha spaceship that's not affected by the atmosphere, right? So it could zip in and out as quickly as they want to. Yeah, Jane. 
So the life carriers and the work that they do from the beginning of time, is, is that considered experiential? For them it is, not for us. Not for us, because we weren't active yeah. yet. Yeah, but the, I, the, we, we the weren't memory, there any, yet. Anything they do, I would think that would be experiential and that would go into the Supreme also because that all was the creatures. next question. Yeah. Yeah, it would be so, part of the Supreme. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Gary. Yeah. Um, just a stupid question. No such thing. Yes, there is. This, <laughs> this one is. Um, you said when we go into Marantz or bodies, could these. Extra, you know, and the in the mirage of bodies, my understanding, are visible. Right. Could some of these extraterrestrials were supposed to be being visited by? Yes. Um, could they be mirages? They could be, but we wouldn't see them unless some, the mechanical physical controllers allowed us to see them. They wouldn't be oh, readily. Okay. They wouldn't be ready. They're not in the sight uh, range of human beings. Now they so may. More they may be in the sight range of some of the other types of humans on other planets, like a three blank brain series, because they have an expanded sight and an expanded hearing both. So, so more than likely, no. More, more than likely, no. But remember, the midwayers can make themselves visible to us on their own, right? And so can the angels but neither one of them do it unless it's a very special situation so don't expect to go to sleep in your bed and wake up and see an angel at the end of your bed doesn't happen okay not <laughs> my wife well, i understand she, the mid wires are mis mischievous little, little buggers well they're not now uh, gary see uh, the way we have to explain them it sounds like they're all that way but the ones that's still on the planet are have not rebelled and they're loyal to the the hierarchy of the universe and michael so they would not be doing mischievous mischievous things period they they wouldn't find that humorous anymore you know like the early ones did did that rebelled so turn your camera okay. back on on gary i can't i'll skip over you because i won't see you raise your hand or anything there you go Hunter. scary that's weird. Oh, your screen's going off. Just tap it. It's, you're you went into pause. Hang on, everybody. Zoom. There we go. We kicked off for some reason. Okay. And this can go back on if it's not already on. Y'all bear with me for a second. I'm doing a technical thing. I thought I had this set up. Here we go. We're good. Can you hear everybody through your earphones? Okay. okay. All right. Okay. So that's number one. And I want to mention something at the beginning of this video so that those that didn't make it tonight know that something's coming up. And I'll, I'll, I'll admit, I'll do it a couple other time, things too, times too and put it online. In 2013 at Rodney's house, we did an 11-week course uh, <laughs> called the... Um, <laughs> what was it, Rodney? <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all give me a sec. Uh, uh, forward. No. Yeah. For no, we're gonna we are we are going to do forward. that too. Now the universe studies, uh, universe study guard slides chart guides. I changed it to the 2004 universe study and DD chart slides. Let me click on that and bring it up so I can tell you that it's it's called the origin history and history and destiny of universe reality okay um that we did in 2013 it's 156 slides i think it was the reason i'm mentioning this is this when we did this they're out there on the youtube videos under the universe reality but the videos are awful. You can't see the people. It's fuzzy, fuzzy. The sound was bad. I never could get the sound worked on it because it was my first time recording out away. 
And, but the information in those slides is so valuable to teach the forward, okay? I don't want to reteach the forward without people having the opportunity <coughs> to learn what's on those slides. Because what this does, it prepares you for the forward so that when I teach you the forward, you're going to go, I got it first time through, okay? I guarantee you. I'm going to teach it so simple that a four-year-old child could understand it, okay? At least a little try. So what I'm going to do, I have to had to choose a day to do it, and the best I can come up with is Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock. And I know Jane can't make it on Sundays because she's got family every Sunday, but she can watch them the next day, you know, because they'll all be recorded. I don't know how many of y'all, there's just two other ones here, but I don't know how many people can go, but if uh, come see these, but I'd love you to attend. It'll be just like a regular meeting. We'll be reading. I'm going to be going over stuff, but I'm going to be going over stuff in depth enough that it should make sense to everyone. And I got this idea going through the Supreme paper. Jane was talking about this before everybody got here tonight, that you know, when you listen to these papers on your own, you're st you, the more you hear them, the more you start to absorb, you know, and knowing the stuff on the Supreme or knowing the Supreme papers are out there. When you go back through this universe study guide, uh, and this is all from the chart that we use the first time through, and I'll put the link out there where you can buy the chart if you want to download it and buy it off the guy. Do you remember the guy's name that did the chart? I don't remember off the top of my head. Very, very brilliant guy. But anyway, it's the same chart that, um, let me move this over. I'm going to show you all something here. I know this is getting away from the paper right at the moment. Let me stop the share. Where's my share? Share screen. And I'm going to share this screen right here. And you're going to see Rodney right in the middle of it. Nope, you won't. You see this chart right here? Yeah, we've yes, seen it right. before. You've seen this many times before. And what I'm going yeah. to show you is you see this thing. It says the nucleus out, nuclear isle of paradise. In the original chart, all this section is up above on this line. Okay. But I couldn't fit it all in when I tried to get everything on one slide. Now, I made a lot of slides where I have this part. Can y'all see that? My arrow? Yes. Yeah, the nuclear isle of paradise. I've moved it over to here because you can't have the nuclear isle of paradise without the original trinity. Correct. Okay? You can't separate the four. The trinity includes the physical part, which is, notice here down here, it says manifestation of four. That's the fourth part of the seven absolutes. Okay? Mm -hmm. You can't have... The seven absolutes without first having the Trinity and part of having the Trinity. When God the Father created the original son, he also created paradise. Okay? Same time. So you can't have this without this. And these, con these connect directly to this area, the destiny, because this is the qualified absolute, the universe of absolute and the unqualified absolute and you can't have any physical universe including Havona okay y'all still with me you can't have paradise or Havona without the unqualified absolute okay and you can't have the unqualified absolute without the universal absolute or the qualified absolute I mean the qualified absolute the deity absolute really should have put, made this deity or qualified absolute. That's what they should have said. And then you can't integrate deity into the ab unqualified absolute without a universal absolute that connects the two. It's part of the trinity of them. Okay? So that's why this, is, this chart is what I started out teaching that class with. Okay? All the parts of this chart. That's why it's so important that I go back and redo this so that people can see the chart. See, the trouble is when we did this the first time, nobody could see the slides. We put it on Rodney's big TV, and I tried everything in the world to get it to record off the big TV, and it just comes out looking like smudge. 
you know, what, whatever I did. So when we reteach this, you'll be able to see the slides, see what I'm talking about, and I won't be dancing around in front of you, okay, <laughs> this time. <laughs> uh, about 260 pounds back then, too. I had 60 more pounds back then, y'all. So, all right, so I'm going to do a new share, and we're going to go back to the slides, start back on tonight's. So that's what's coming. Just want to let y'all know. All right. Sound like a plan? Cool. That's just coming Sunday at 3, right? Sunday at 3 o'clock. And if y'all come up with a better day that will work for everybody, I'm open. But we got Tuesday and Thursday. I don't want to overrun everybody, you know, having it Saturday. You know, I can have it Saturday night. It doesn't matter to me. You know, it really doesn't. It would but, be up. Huh? It would be up to Jane. Yeah. I don't, I, uh, yeah, it's kind of difficult for me to, um, <laughs> difficult to decide because I don't know family, well, like my husband for one, and mm -hmm. I, I, uh, well, Jane, I'd love you to be there, I, but I definitely want you to see it. If you can't definitely. come on Sunday for sure, that, that's, watch that, the videos. That's, I cannot say, you know, this yeah. one, what time would work. Well, I guarantee you from us doing this the first time and Rodney can verify this, everyone's going to have a lot of questions. Okay. Cause the last time I went half the time it took, it was for questions, you know, because this is, this is new information for most everybody in the planet, really, you know, very few people understand this stuff. And if you, I guarantee you, if you stick with me for 11 weeks on this teaching of this stuff you will understand what's going on when we teach the forward i guarantee it roger yeah why can't we work it into a tuesday or thursday night we could do that we could very well do it we could start doing it on thursday nights I'd like to that would work better for me Was that work better for you jane oh definitely same here well, tell you what we'll do. We'll finish what we're working on on Thursday night right, right now. I don't know how close we are. Yeah, because Thursday. I'm committed to those days, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, what we'll do then is we will finish the paper one because that's all the papers on the thought adjuster. The next one's coming up was the uh, seraphim. Okay. okay. On this seraphic plant. We can always come back and get that right after we're done. But it's easier for me on Thursday nights, too, because that way I don't have to work out another day mm -hmm. to be online. Right. Yeah, I don't want to either. Does that work for you, too? Oh, yeah. D Diane likes that better, too. Good. So Good. that's what we'll do. We'll finish the papers on thirty Thursday. I don't remember where we are on that paper. Y'all, I, I do so many papers every day, and I'm working so di different. I can't remember. I couldn't remember where we are on this paper tonight. I had to go look it up. So. Yeah. Uh, we will get with you, Roger. I don't know how you actually do it. I'm having a hard time keeping up with what you publish, <laughs> you know, to for us to listen to. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't expect y'all to listen to every single thing. I, I really huh? don't. I don't expect y'all to listen to every single thing. I want to put them out there so that whenever you want to go back and just listen to the paper with Merritt Horn reading it and just relax and listen, it'll be out there for you to do it. So the reason I've been emailing it to y'all, I don't have to do that. Y'all can just go out to to uh, YouTube and see which ones are new. But No, least... I like the emails because I just go okay. to the email. All right. I, I just thought doing the emails, you can find it easy. You can leave it in your and, email. And the beauty yeah. of the email, Roger, is that if you pause a few minutes after one finishes, it moves right into the following paper. It does. It does. That. Without commercials like YouTube or interruptions. Right. Because right. they queue up different things. Yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't true. necessarily follow yours. Right. Right. You know, you can go out on... Uh, on my channel, which is at the very bottom of both the Fifth Ethical Revelation website and the Atlanta Urantia website. Yeah, what am I saying? It's there too. But yeah. one of the top choices 
is YouTube videos. And if you click that, it should take you to the page where all my video, video videos are. And you can either subscribe there or you can go just take your mouse up a little bit on any of the videos playing and it'll say channel. If you just click on that, it will it'll subscribe you to my channel and you'll see all the videos that I did. It'll it'll queue them up for you. So which is kind of nice. I know that from watching Daniel Boone so much, right? <laughs> it's our favorite show. It's our favorite show at nighttime <laughs> when I gotta forget about uh, teaching. Okay, let's keep move on because we're we've eaten up half the night already. Okay, Diane. Satanius system contains all, all of these types and numerous intimate intermediate groups, although some are very sparsely represented. Said I was muted. No. Okay. Let me go back up one here. Okay, so what it was saying here is there's many different groups and intermediate types in between all of these groups. Okay, so um, sorry, I was muted. Okay, here we go. Jane, would you take this one? One, the atmospheric types. The physical differences of the worlds of mortal habitation are chiefly determined by the nature of the atmosphere. Other influences which contribute to the planetary differentiation of life are relatively minor. Okay, so if you have a lot of different planets, you got a lot of different atmosphere, and the atmosphere determines whether it's going to be a green growing planet, whether it's going to have air, whether it's not going to have air. There's beings out there that don't breathe air. There's super breathers, sub breathers, things like that, and it's going to tell us about each and every one of those. Excuse me, Mom. Uh, Rodney, would you take the next one, please? Yes. The present atmospheric status of Urantia is almost ideal for the support of the breathing type of man. But the human type can be so modified that it can live on both the super atmospheric and the sub atmospheric planets. Such modifications also extend to the animal life, life, which differs greatly on the various inhabited spheres. There is a very great, there is a very great modification of animal orders on both the sub and the super atmospheric worlds. So even not only the humans can breathe different, differently, but the animals themselves on those planets are different, right? It reminds me of, do y'all ever see Kevin Costner in Waterworld? You ever yeah, see that yeah. movie? And they, yeah, and they reach back behind his ears and they see he has gills. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> so there's modifications that can be made so he could breathe underwater or breathe above water. Right. And this may be the same sort of thing that, that that these life carriers use to make beings that can live in the ocean. Right. Just that's just cool. something that comes up on my just an example. OK, uh, Gary, would you take the next one, please? On the atmospheric types in uh, Satania, about two and a half percent are sub breathers about 5% are super breathers, and over 91% are mid breathers, altogether accounting for 98.5% of Satania worlds. That's 98% of the worlds are fit, fit in these categories. Now, let me mention something here. You know, oxygen, the mixture, mixture of oxygen and our atmosphere, carbon dioxide, stuff like that, Oxygen, if we get too much of it, it becomes toxic, toxic to human beings. Y'all knew that, didn't you? Yeah. You know, when they when they have these scuba diving shows on TV, I always get aggravated because 
the announcer will say, he's running out of oxygen, so he has to come back to the top. That's not true. The air that you breathe in a scuba tank is compressed air. It's not oxygen. Okay, it's the mixture, just like the air you breathe when you're out of the water. Okay, now if you get too much oxygen, then it can become toxic and it can kill you. Okay, they have something called trimix, which is an oxygen helium mixture that allows you to go deeper in the ocean up to about 250 to 300 feet. But you have to know how to mix it to keep it from killing killing you. And if you ever watch these shows when these guys are talking all these things, they sound like um, Daffy Duck, don't they? The reason being your vocal cords are built to, to breathe and let out air, not oxygen. So when you get trimix and you're down under the thing, the helium makes you sound like this. All right. So that's why that happens. But if you get too much oxygen, too much helium, what happens? You black out and die. That's the way. It, there's one or two scuba divers a year that die from this. All right, because it's dangerous. It's a dangerous thing to do. I know I did it for a long time. Over 3,000 dives. So I did it a lot. 3,000? I, I was stupid a lot. Yeah. I it think shows. I had 3,179, something like that. Wow. Before I quit. Got too old. All right. Got scared. <laughs> you know. Did you ever right. encounter some great whites? Yes, but they weren't interested in us. They were chasing the other bigger fish around. We don't, we're not on their menu. They like seals more than anything else. Okay, next. Uh, Diane, would you take this one? Beans such, such as the Urantia races are classified as mid-breathers. You represent the average or typical breathing order of mortal existence. If intelligent Creatures should exist on a planet with an atmospheric similar atmosphere similar to that of your near neighbor, Venus. They would belong to the super breather group, while those inhabiting a planet with an atmosphere as thin as that of your or your outer neighbor, Mars, would be denominated sub breathers. So, if there really were Martians, they were all sub breathers. Okay. <clears throat> If there were v women on Venus, you know, everybody thinks that's where the women come from is Venus. Yeah. Well, if they were there, they'd be super breathers. So they wouldn't want you. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Okay. So this is just examples of, pl of planets in our own solar system where it would be possible for these life carriers to develop life, but we have to make modifications so that the beings could live there. Make sense? E even our own planet like the moon they could do that of course they'd have to pick, fix up something so that the incoming asteroids wouldn't kill everybody okay uh jane would you take the next one if mortals should inhabit a planet devoid of air like your moon they would belong to the separate order of non-breathers this type represents a radical or extreme adjustment to the planetary environment and is separately considered. Non-breathers account for the remaining one and a half percent of Satania worlds. So there are there some are worlds, worlds that are non-breathers, okay? Not in many. our local system, not many, one and a half percent. That's not very many. So do you think this is a good planet to go, you know, you know, create society on? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Ah, it doesn't much, make, make much sense, does it? No, I wouldn't think so. Just like mortals. But, but they would be mortals and they exist. Yes, but they would be modified by the life carriers and we can't modify ourselves. Right? When they are in Urantia, when they go to the first mentioned world, would that all change then? It all changes, y'all. When they, every, the, all these different types of mortals go to the mansion world, they get a standard Marantia blank, okay? okay? The standard Marantia blank is a mixture of many, the same gases we have on our planet plus one, okay? 
So we'll be all breathing the same gas on all the Marantia spheres. They're all developed with the same gas and they'll all become breathers as far as I can tell. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is just on the planets. That make it easy. Yeah. And they're going to talk about uh, the only planet that has beings uh, shorter than four feet in this paper. And they said, this should be interesting to y'all because the only planet that has beings less than four feet feet is a is a planet that your neighbor in close approximation mars i don't know how i you know who knows i don't know but think about it this way you know think of all the uh ufos that's they've got that's crashed almost all of them have a mixture of the big tall ones and what the little short guys so mm -hmm. these may be the beings that are visiting us from our nearest neighbor. You know, think of it that way. Kind of interesting. This book explains so many different types of things, right? Like, did we read this there or not? We didn't, did we? No. Jane, no. would you take this one? No, I just I just read. Oh, did you? Okay. Uh, Rodney, whoops. I didn't mean to move off of it. There we go. Two. The elemental types. These differentiations have to do with the relation of mortals to water, air, and land. And there are four distinct species of intelligent life as they are related to these habitats. The Urantia races are of the land order. Okay, so we're the land order, even though we have a mixture of what? The, we're an elemental type, we're an atmospheric type, we're also, what, a temperature type, right? All these different things are part of our makeup. Okay, Gary, would you take the next one? Okay, it is quite impossible for you to envisage, envisage, envision, envision, really, it's, it, envision. yeah, for us to, See, this is envisage, yeah. There you go, yeah. Rodney got it to envisage the environment which prevails during the early ages of some worlds. These unusual conditions make it necessary for the evolving animal life to remain in its marine nursery habitat for longer periods than on those planets which very early provide a hospitable land and atmosphere environment. Conversely, on some worlds of the sub super breathers, when the planet is not too big, it is sometimes expedient to provide for a mortal type which can readily negotiate atmospheric passage. These air negotiators sometimes intervene between the water and the land groups and they always live in a measure upon the ground eventually evolving into land dwellers but on some worlds for ages they continue to fly even after they have become land type beings now we're still talking about humans right so this is a group of humans that developed in the water. They developed the ability to fly, okay? And in that process, they started using the land. And over a period of time, they eventually settled on the land, became land-dwelling beings, okay? So if you think about it, our own evolution from reading the papers on evolution, you know that we all started in the ocean, right? And the animals started crawling up on the land, you know, a little bit of time, most, mostly crocodiles and frogs and things like that. That's where all the, you know, millions of years ago, all the dinosaurs and all that came from. The, they eventually went extinct, except for the alligators, the snakes, frogs, things like that. And our ancestor, believe it or not, started as a frog. Okay. And that frog developed into different types of animals over millions and millions of years. And eventually it ended up into a break off of the, the 
primate family called lemurs, okay? And the early lemurs branched off into the first human beings, okay? So evolution wasn't wrong. You know, Darwin went wrong. It's just we didn't break off from monkeys. You know, that went a totally different direction, all right? Even though a lemur is part of a primate. So that's where we came from. But we started where? In the ocean. Yeah. Okay. That's what, that's um, the most important part. Okay, Diane, and we're back up again. It is both amazing and amusing to observe the early civilization of a primitive race of human beings taking shape, in one case, in the air and treetops, and in another, amidst the sh shallow waters of sheltered tropic basins, as well as on the top, as well as on the bottom sides and shores of these marine gardens of the dawn, races of such extraordinary spheres. Even on Urantia, there was a long age during which primitive man preserved himself and advanced his primitive civilization by living for the most part in the treetops, as did his earlier ab abor arboreal uh, ancestors. And on Urantia, you still have a group of diminutive mammals, the bat family, that are air navigators, and your seals and whales of, of marine habitat are also of the mammalian order. Wow. Any of these animals, mammals, could have developed into being humans, yeah. okay? <laughs> so think of it this way. If we would have come from the bat family, we might all still be sleeping upside down, hanging from our feet. <laughs> yeah. You know, thank you, God. <laughs> Maybe that wasn't been so bad. Maybe we had a little bit more up here. You think? Yeah, but just think of the Maya grain headaches women would have. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> okay, so the the civilizations and humans come from a lot of different aspects. There's nothing you can't you can't keep God from making humans from almost anything, can you? Okay, uh, Jane, would you take the next one? I'm sorry about this. Keep beeping, y'all. I'm on some medication, and that keeps telling me I'm over. Oh. No, dude, there's nothing that can be done. I'm just going to let it die down. Okay, in Satania, of the elemental types, 7% are water, 10% air, 70% land and 13% combined land and air types. But these modifications of early intelligent creatures are neither human fishes nor human birds. They are of the human and pre-human types, neither superficious nor glorified birds, but distinctly mortal. They make a point to make that point that these beings are mortal, just like we are. They're not birds. They're not fish, okay? So really, if you think about it, whales, porpoises, dolphins, are those really fish? Not no. really, but no. because they're mammals, aren't they? They're mammals. Yeah, makes them different. And they also seem to have a higher order of intellect. Yeah, and communication with each other. I know one thing, I'm not going to be eating any sharks or or porpoises or anything like that myself so yeah you know you know you think about it god has provided for us such a plethora of food you know especially fish you know fish are like have no brain their, their brains are just for basic swimming function and mating and that's it you know they don't they don't think they don't have any consciousness you notice jesus always fed the apostles what Fish. 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 Okay. It's a, yeah. Fish and bread. It's 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 a way to sustain ourselves uh, and eat a physical creature that can help us stay alive. And yet you're not you're not going out and you're not eating dogs and cats and things like that. Right. So there's God has provided for us. You just got to get used to the food and the the vegetables are, are such a, you know, you could live the rest of your life on vegetables. As long as you get nuts too, you get all the protein you need. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there, it makes sense. You know, that's why Adam and Eve started here on this planet is what 
vegetarians, right? All right, something to think about. All right. Let's see, Rodney, I think you're up. Yes, three gravity types. By modification of creative design, intelligent beings are so constructed that they can freely function on spheres both smaller and larger than your antio, thus being a measure accommodated to the gravity of those planets which are not of ideal size and so density. The, the height of individuals has a lot to do with what type of gravity you have on your planet, right? And that's why some of us are tall, some of us are short, and uh, makes me wonder sometimes if you're closer to the equator, if you if you end up shorter, and if you're like in the Ar Antarctica, do you end up taller? Good question. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> you know the, uh, that's a fact. That's a fact. I think you know. Yeah, you know, Roger, the Finland people are the longest, the tallest people on Earth. Yeah, as a group. Yeah. yeah, but Eskimos are short. Eskimos are short, yeah, though. True. Of course, you got to remember the Eskimos came across the land bridge from Europe, right? And Correct. they should they could have developed in Europe in a place where they would have been shorter. Now, think about the American Indian and the uh, Indians from South America, right? The South American Indians were sh all short. You know, the, you know the, the Incas and stuff like that. But the ones in North America, like the Blackfoot and uh, Onondaga, the, the Onondaga um, Mohawk, uh, all those tend to be more Dakota. Art, Dakotas. These are all taller Indians, every single one of them. And they're at least like six foot and even some of them taller. But it makes you wonder if the, these tendencies develop because of where they evolved, their ancestors evolved on the planet. Because look at how many people from Mexico are short, right? That's true. And that would be DNA, right? Right, that would be the DNA. DNA it developed yeah. because of the height, of the, the gravity of where they were. Makes That's sense. right. Yep. The larger a planet, the stronger the gravity. The stronger right? the gravity, so the people on it would have been shorter, right? From what I understand, if you're on, on a smaller planet, you would be taller. I, I could have that backwards. I yeah, but that's, pretty, that's, I think that's it's right. Backwards. I think it'd be backwards. The the ones from Mars would have been taller, taller. and the ones from no. Venus would have been shorter, right? No, I think it's the, it's the opposite because the opposite? mass mass creates gravity. Correct. So the more right. the more mass, the more gravity. The more gravity it has, so people. it'd be shorter. It, it, it was I had it right the first time. I mean, Mars would be very short people, and some place like Venus would be taller people. We need the physicist, the Oriental guy. What's his name? No, <laughs> some place yeah. like Jupiter. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's Jupiter. Right. They're probably all under two feet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go on. Let's move on. We're gonna get stuck Baby's here. walking around. You have little babies walking around. You know. What do you mean? Yeah. I hate these big people. Okay. <laughs> Onward ho. I think Gary, you're up again. <laughs> okay. The various planetary types of mortals vary in height. The average in Nebanon being a trifle under seven feet. Hmm. Some of the larger worlds are peopled with beings who are only about two and a half feet in height. Listen, y'all, I only read scary. this. That I only scary. read this about eight times in the last three days. Okay. <laughs> Shows you how well I remember things. <laughs> <laughs> mortals, mortal, mortal stature ranges from. Uh, here to up through the average height of the average size planet to about 10 feet on the smaller inhabited spheres. In Satania, there is only one race under four feet in height. 20% of Satania inhabited worlds are peopled with mortals 
of the modified gravity types occupying the larger and the smaller planets. Okay, so that's that's our 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 answer right there. If you lived in Mars, you'd be um, <laughs> about two, two, and feet. Feet, two and a half feet two tall. Feet. Right. Well, well, yeah. Wait, what? How how big is Mars? I mean, it could be Jupiter. Well, it could be Jupiter too. Either one. Right? Yeah. Because they're large. Is Mars large? <laughs> yeah, no, Mars is planet. Huh? And it's smaller than Earth. No, Mars yeah. is larger than Earth. Much larger. Yeah. Where's my... It, uh, what, uh, I got a picture of that somewhere. Where what it is... The different size. Modified, oh, there's, there's, there's modified there. gravity types. Modified... What, what was that, Rodney? What... What is modified gravity? We're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay. Hold your question. All right. I didn't see the, the slide on where it said it's interesting. It, we'll get to it uh, about the shorter ones because there's a planet close to us that talks about it. All right. I did remember that from reading this so much. Okay. Temperature types, the next. Uh, who's back up? Gary just read again. Diana. Diana. I just want to say that the fairies live in, the, in the certain areas that are so huge because they're so tiny. Fairies. Oh, no, there really are. I know there are. <laughs> We've been having this discussion for 15 years. <laughs> okay. Four. There might be fairies, but they dress funny. <laughs> no, no, they're little creatures. <laughs> Four, the temperature types. It is possible to create living beings who can withstand temperatures both much higher and much lower than the life range of the Urantia races. There are, there are five distinct orders of beings as they are classified with reference to heat regulating mechanisms. In this scale, the Urantia races are number three. 30% of Satanian worlds are peopled with races of modified temperature types. 12% belong to the higher temperature ranges, 18% to the lower, as compared with Urantians who function in the mid-temperature group. Okay. Voice back on. That song out there, hot-blooded, doesn't mean a thing, does it? <laughs> because we're right in the mid-temperature range. Okay, let's see if we can get a couple more of these done before we put to the how close am I to I'm not even close to a section. I'm not getting up. All right. Uh Jane, would you take the next one for me, please? Five, the electric types. The electric, magnetic, and electronic behavior of the worlds varies greatly. There are 10 designs of mortal life variously fashioned to withstand the differential energy of the spheres. These 10 varieties also react in slightly different ways to the chemical rays of ordinary sunlight. But these slight physical variations in no way affect the intellectual or the spiritual life. Okay, so the electric types is controlled by whom? Y'all know this. The physical the, controllers? The physical controllers, right? The mechanical and the physical controllers can put, uh, control all electronic mechanisms in all the worlds, and they're all specific for each and every world. So our electronic makeup, our, our magnetic and electronic makeup of our cells are different for each type of race. You see that? I mean, each type of being. So just the way it is. All right. Uh, they give us all these percentages, like we're going to use them for something. I don't know what it is, but okay. It's right. going to be on the, if they're on the quiz later. They're in the final exam. Life. That's right. When we get to the mansion worlds, did you not remember those percentages? Yeah. So of the electric groupings of mortal life, almost 23% belong to class number four, the Urantia type of existence. These types are distributed as follows. Number one, 1%. Number two, 2%. Number three, 5%. Number four, 
23%. Number five, 27%. Number six, 24%. Number seven, 8%. Number eight, 5%. Number nine, 3%. And number 10, 2%. So there's and only in whole, in whole percentages. Now there's only one group number five that's a higher percentage of of these electronic types than we are and that's 27 percent because we are 24 percent okay so there are more numbers of one group that's a different electronic grouping than we are energizing type this is how you get in energy um, to sustain yourself y'all let me take a quick look here We're not going to get through this section tonight, it looks like. No, we're not. We got three more slides after this one. Let, let's knock off on this one tonight and we'll come back to energy energizing types next Tuesday, right? Yeah, dear. Are you going to ask something? No. Okay. All right. So let's quit for tonight. Remember your place. We'll, we'll park here again on next Tuesday. You stop the share. And we'll say a little prayer and we'll thank God that we made it through the night. We made a decision on the forward stuff. And, and uh, so I don't have to do anything extra. Just come to the meetings again. Y'all are so smart. See why I have y'all come to the meetings. <laughs> okay. Rodney, you want to pr pray for us tonight? Sure. Heavenly Father, we're thankful again for the opportunity that we've had to come together tonight and uh, study this uh, beautiful revelation. We uh, thank you for, for letting us know about the different types of mortals that there are in our universes. We thank uh, Roger very much for his ability to further explain uh, what we're reading. And Father, uh, we, we pray that we all learn that it's very important for us to realize that all humans are the, your sons and daughters. And we pray that your will be done. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you, Rodney. Oh, man, yeah, you do it. good, Rodney. You can do it every day if you want. I, of course, <laughs> I have no authority, so. I'll tell you what. <laughs> you shirking your responsibility, Gary. Is that what hey, I'm, yeah, hey, listen, I could not be a woman. I'm not devious enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me. But start. I make a try at it. I'll grant you that. Yeah, yeah I'll bet. <laughs> Thank all y'all for at home for coming and listening to us, everybody on Facebook and YouTube and Vimeo. And uh, pr be sure to go out to Vimeo. Um, you can go out there and join our broadcast, our channel, and you can see all the videos I've done on reading the Urantia book. I've been working on it. I've done the, quite a few of the Life of Christ, and we're going to start from the beginning of Life of Christ and come back up to the Last Supper, so that we have all the life of Christ done. I'm hoping to have that done by early summer, uh, one at a time. So you can just sit and listen to the ranch book. You don't have to say anything. You have to do anything. You hit the thing to go and sit all the way through a paper. And it's a great way to do it because most of the papers are 30 minutes to an hour at the most. So mm -hmm. it is a fun way to do it. So go out there on YouTube and subscribe and you can get them as I put them out there. They'll come up on your channel. Thank you, everyone, for coming and listening to my ranting and raving, and God bless you each and every one and your families, and love one another. we got to keep on loving one another. Life's too short not to. Right. See you next time. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, y'all. Take care.